All right, in this video, I'm going to go through solutions to uh, the exercises in the document part 041, exercises input and output. As with all the exercises, I recommend that you attempt all of them uh, before watching these solution videos, uh, but I'm going to assume you've already done that. Link to the document is in the video description, as it always is. And uh, I believe all of this code works perfectly in Octave. I will make sure to check that and put it on the video. All right, these are pretty basic, I would say, in this section. So use input to ask the user for their area code and then display it. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new variable. And I'm gonna set it equal to input parentheses, what's your area code, using two apostrophes to generate one apostrophe on the screen. So if I run it, what's your area code? I'm just gonna make up a number and hit enter. And there we go. That number is then going to be entered into and saved in this variable that I just created. All right, ask the user for their first name without requiring them to use quotes, then display a greeting alongside their name. So I'm pretty sure this is pretty similar to an example that I already did in one of the videos, but we'll just go through it again. Now, this is the way I don't want you to do it, but I want to show you the compare and contrast, so I'm going to do it this way first. So if I do it this way and I run it, what's your name? I'll type in my name, hit enter. It doesn't work unless I use single quotes around my name, and that's kind of annoying. So what you can do is, if you know that you want the user to input a text, you just do comma and then a single S in single quotes. And now when I run it and type in my name, I don't need the single quotes, and it will say hello to me. All right, use the following variables to display this text right here. So the idea is, how can I combine these variables that are already here uh, to display this out without, because there's easier ways to do this, right? I could just do DISP, parentheses, single quotes, and then display this out. But that's not what I want to do. I want to use these variables here just for practice. And I'm also going to need to add in some blank spaces. So I'm going to modify this line of code, add a blank space there, add in the text variable right here, comma, add in another, actually we'll put the blank space right there, another blank space there, we can't just write number one. And if we try to do that, let's actually, I'll leave that in. I'll, I'll leave that in and we'll see what happens. I'm use dot, 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 go down to the next line. Add in my spaces. I'll actually get rid of the period there and put in the last prime here. So this is not the final solution. This is not exactly gonna work, but I'm gonna start with this as an example. All right, so what it says is the last prime before D is A. Huh, we wanted numbers to show up. But what happened was the numbers 197 were translated to the corresponding symbols that they represent, which turned out to be uh, D and A, respectively. So what we need to do is use num to string. And now when I rerun it, it'll say the last prime before 100 is 97. So just mostly a reminder to use num to string when you need to display out a number alongside some text. Write code to ask the user for the volume and density of an object, then multiply them together to get the mass and display it. All right, I'm going to speed up the video as I have been with some of these other examples. Great, and there we go. Continuing on down. Write an fprintf to display the following variable and text exactly as written, including the spaces right here. Now, there's a few different ways to do this, but I'm going to do it in what I think is the most reasonable way. By the way, the number right here with all these calculations is a fairly exact amount of time, amount of days, that it takes the Earth to revolve around the sun. And if we just display that out, what you'll see is, oh, it actually does round it. Uh, what if I don't want to round it? Uh, let me switch my format here, format long. And I'll switch it back to format short. No, actually, yeah, I'll switch it back here. All right, so we see that it's not exactly 365. It actually is, uh, well, we have a little bit more accuracy than that, at least with this calculation right here. But we want to display it just rounded to two decimal places. Now, just displaying out the variable, if I'm in format short, it will actually display uh, with the two decimal places, but I want to use fprintf to do it. And with fprintf, what you need to do is start it off just like a display with the two apostrophes here, all right? And perhaps even include the text that you want displayed out with, uh, you can use double single quotes to get a single single quote to print out. But now this part I want to change, all right? I don't want it to be displayed like this. 
So what I'm going to do is, and, and there's a few ways to do this, but I'm going to get rid of all this and instead do percent %f. And then after the apostrophe here, I'm going to do comma days. And let's just see for starters what this looks like. So I run it and it says that's about, and then it displays more decimal places than I want. Um, the blank spaces on the right are fine. Those are good. But there's no blank spaces on the left, right? It's not displaying the way I want. You could just literally put in the blank spaces yourself, but I want you to know how to do it without that solution. And what you can do instead is say, well, first of all, I only want two decimal places. So between the percent and the F, 0.2 for two decimal places. If you put a three here, it would display three. And then let's see, one, two, three blank spaces, but I want that on top of a six digit number. I mean, there's like five digits, but also there's the uh, decimal place as a sixth symbol. So six symbols plus three spaces is nine. So I'll put a nine right here, percent 9.2F and rerun it. And now it looks exactly the way I want. Now, one slightly weird thing that you might notice is that my prompt for like the next code that I might type in is over here on the right, right? So if I like type in CLC, it goes over there. That's probably not what you want. So what you can do to fix that is right before the apostrophe, put a backslash N, which basically just means go down to the next line. The display function does that for you automatically, but with F print F, we gotta, we gotta type it in. So let's run it again. All right, there we go. So it prints out very nicely and the command prompt goes down to the next line. All right, some multiple choice here. Consider the following line of code. If the value of cost, the variable named cost right here, is 1.73, how many blank spaces will there be between is and 1.73 when this is displayed out? And this is what we were just talking about, right? So it's percent %12.2f, 1.73 is four symbols. 12 here is saying there needs to be at least 12 total spaces, but that's including the four that are occupied by 1.73. So we just say 12 minus 1.73 and we get eight. C is the correct answer here. What does this code display? Now, obviously we could just run it, but let's try and figure it out without running it. All right, X equals percent 5.1F. So let's start with the point one. That's the easiest part, right? So it's 0.3 right now, but it's gonna be rounded. That's part of uh, figuring this out. So it's gonna be a 0.4. Okay, so that means it's gonna be one of these two answers right here. And so is there going to be a space or not? Well, the five says that the number needs to take up five total spaces. One, two, three, four, five will be that blank space. D is the correct answer here. And you can run it to verify that. Now this next bit here is just a bit of function practice. It's not really from the input output section of videos that I've created. But I find that students just like really need to practice their functions. So here's some more practice with that. Write a function that takes two inputs. The inputs are expected to be matrices. The function then returns the matrix with the overall larger maximum value. So for example, if these are the two input matrices, since nine is the biggest value among these two matrices, B should be the matrix returned. Now we need to be careful here when it says write a function that takes two inputs. We are not talking about the input function itself. We're not talking about, we're not talking about this thing right here where we're asking for volume and density. We are talking about what are sometimes called parameters or arguments to the function. The things that go into the parentheses of the function itself. This line of code is calling this function, get bigger matrix. We haven't written the function yet. So if I try and run this code, it just gives an error. And it basically tells me, hey, I don't know what this get bigger matrix is. I don't know what you're referring to with that. We gotta create that function. So let's go ahead and do that. So we create a new tab here, new script. Always start your functions with the word function, square brackets, and then in the square brackets, your return variable. I'll just use y as my result variable. Set it equal to your function name, parentheses, the two inputs. I'll use M1 and M2 for the names of the two matrices that I'm passing in. And now I need to figure out which of these matrices has the bigger maximum value. So just for readability, I'm gonna create some more variables. I'm gonna create the max one and set it equal to the maximum value of M1 as a column vector. And I'm gonna do a similar thing with the matrix two. And then if max one is greater than max two, We'll return, we'll set our return variable, this thing in the brackets up here, equal to max one, because it has the bigger overall maximum. Otherwise, we'll set y equal to max two. 
And there's other ways to do this, but I think this is a perfectly fine way to do it. I am using an if and an else, and I haven't actually covered that in this video sequence yet, so this is slightly out of order. I kind of apologize for that, but uh, uh, it, it's fairly easy to read, I hope, right? If this is true, do this. Otherwise, do this. And I will talk about, oh, and that's a typo right there. And I will talk about ifs and else's in this video series, uh, I think coming up relatively soon in the sequence. All right, so let's save it. Make sure to save your function in the same file name as the name of your function. The name is getBiggerMatrix.m because the function is getBiggerMatrix. Let's go down here and run it back to our original code. I think I messed something up slightly. Let's go back over here. Oh yeah, I I, um, I didn't mean to uh, return the maximums. I meant to return the matrixes, the matrix itself, whichever matrix is bigger. So that was my mistake. This needed to be equal to M1 and M2 not max one and max two. It doesn't really say what to do if the maximums are equal. So we're just gonna assume that we'll return matrix two if the maxes are equal. So let me try that again. All right, great. So here's A, here's B. Which one has the bigger maximum? B does, so B is our result. If instead I make one of these numbers quite a bit bigger, and so now matrix A has the bigger maximum, well then, matrix A is the result from our function. And that's all for this video.